r slash ask reddit what thing from the 90s do you think should make a comeback the economy i'm voting for clinton bill clinton in shades and crescendos and surges of light he came through the portal and raced through the night i've done it he cried with a laugh and a grin i've got the economy help me begin but no one believed him they just didn't care they stared at him speechless in silent despair their savings were squandered and spent in the slum they sighed in surrender and voted for trump the part where i was a kid and had no responsibilities and played awesome video games i'm 32 i still do that you forgot the part about having no responsibilities i still play awesome games but it's at night for usually around two hours i never can truly say i'm done with responsibility there is always something to do work on learn or read but neglecting what you enjoy is just as bad so i game when i feel i can say my day is done chat rooms yeah they were lame and silly but i had some great drunken piss my pants chats way back when funny how they just fell out of favor osl 18 slash f near you hit me up at natascom com LAN parties playing games online is fine but there's something really great about being in the same room with a bunch of your friends connecting your pcs ordering a ton of pizza and just gaming for 48 straight hours or whatever lol carrying around a 50 pound computer and a huge crt monitor and oh god the heat Hope you guys are hungry I just threw a tray of bagel bites on the table between all our computers. They should be done in 5 minutes. Discover a channel with discover magazine style programming. History channel with history on it. TLC equals the learning channel. MTV plays music videos. Edit. Seems like there was much love for these channels back in the day and more of them I didn't list we miss. Animal planet when it was about animals and not rednecks. Rednecks are animals too. 90s alt rock girls wearing those string top things at shoe diaries. Those sweaters with the large neck openings that exposes one of the shoulders and teases you into thinking that it might drop low enough to see the girl's boob. Weren't those 80s? Crash Bandicoot games. It deserves a proper new game. Reminiscent of the original trilogy. Naughty Dog creates a new series for each new PlayStation platform. PS1 had Crash, PS2 had Jack and Daxter, and PS3 had Uncharted. Let's see what big series they have in store for the PS4. Edit. Okay guys, if you look at like the first two comments below, you can see that I've been reminded about The Last of Us. I know I forgot it the first time I typed this comment. Please stop reminding me. Liberal usage of the word. Rad. I never gave this word up. I made a point to use it regularly, along with, gnarly, righteous, excellent, and various other types of exclamations. Tubular never really applied to me, but every once in a while it gets thrown in the mix to freshen things up. Dude. Bodacious. Toys and cereal boxes. Got. My nephew is missing out on those. I used to get computer game demo discs. That's how I first played Heart of Darkness. Yep, found that morbid ass shit in a Choco Pops box. Good times. WTF. They don't do that anymore. Yugoslavia edit 1. Not a Serb edit 2. I'm sorry to all that went through the hardships and suffering of the war. This was just meant as joke towards 90s nostalgia cliches. Someone's got a case of Yugo nostalgia. Yugostalgia. Come on. Fresh Prince. But Will is the uncle now. And Colton is played by Ben Carson. And Young Thug as Hillary. A decent Star Trek series. The original was good, but Next Generation was just ducking awesome. At least once you got into it. I didn't like the first few episodes BC I thought the new characters were weird but I really liked it after about season 1 episode 5 or so. My ability to eat whatever the hell I wanted without gaining weight. If you duck like a teenager. Walk everywhere because no one can drive, carry a 20 pound backpack everywhere, and work out enough to compensate for the fact you aren't passively growing taller, you still can, open bracket, but that sounds like work, so duck it and have another beer, oh yeah, emotionally triggered eating was probably less of thing as a teen too, duck like a teenager, so duck for 5 minutes and climax, 
unsolved mysteries. Robert Stack and that intro music always freaked me the duck out. That show had me convinced I was going to be abducted by aliens. Massive super soakers. Why are water guns so shite now? I had the Super Soaker 3000 which had a backpack that was so heavy when filled someone else would have to put it on you and I could only walk like an encumbered person in Skyrim. Felt like someone slapped you as hard as they could when you got hit with it, and in like 2 shots later and a shitload of pumping later and you were running on empty. I had it too. Mobility wasn't an issue when you were essentially a turret of watery doom. Nickelodeon having good, quality cartoons. Even though I'm an adult, I love the occasional cartoon. Nowadays, every show contains live action people and I hate it. Check out Bob's Burgers. Funniest animated show on Imo Edit. Apparently I need to watch Rick and Morty. Trust me, I have. It's just sometimes I like to mellow out while watching kids cartoons. I love the adult cartoons that are out, but watching Nickelodeon kids cartoons makes me feel like a kid again. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yo why the duck was it so hard for every ducking kid to put the shrine of the silver monkey together? Shit was three pieces and one was a head like WTF. Every time I saw that I was pissed at that wasted opportunity I would have obviously destroyed had I just been given a chance. And guts. X-Files. Oh. Wait. Finding porn magazines in the woods. Not for nothing. But finding a wild porn stash was pretty awesome. But in reality, it meant that someone was fapping out in the woods. Seriously, that would be some disturbing shit to be riding your bike down a trail. All gassed up on Serge or Joster and come across a guy named Wayne or Gary cranking it to the May 1992 issue of High Society. That probably happened to some kid. And now he is in free fantasy football leagues and posts on Reddit all the time. I'm more of a hockey fan actually. Chris Farley and Phil Hartman. HTTP colon slash slash www NBC com Saturday Night Live Video Officer Miller slash N10010 Farley what do you look for in a woman? Hartman my mother abandoned me when I was 3. So I'll look for a woman who will love me for a little while. Then go away. 3D Doritos. I miss these every day. My wife and I found these new Doritos jacked 3D and they aren't even close. I saw 3D on a Doritos bag and almost passed out in the grocery store. Bought them, opened them on the way to the car, and was pissed off. They sucked. Nothing will ever beat those puffy, delicious, crunchy, airy bastards. I miss these every day you like to imagine that you wake up every morning and shed a single tear. Whispering 3D Doritos before mailing another letter to the president of Frito-Lay. The internet. I feel sad for people who didn't get to experience what it was like before Web 2.0 and the corporate takeover. It was like the digital wild west and it was glorious. ICQ. Pow wow. Ike. Refresh base chat rooms. That period just before broadband when you had to really like what you were downloading because it would take ages. Well that was cool too but I'm not really getting nostalgic about the old technology as much as the overall feel and environment. There were not ads everywhere. You weren't being tracked constantly. So many web pages by individuals instead of companies. Social media didn't dominate. You weren't being sold around every corner, etc. Information just felt so much more free and unregulated. It was an exchange of ideas. Hobbies, interests not just a place to make money, believe it or not back then if you used a search engine to look up a something that could be considered a product, you'd get information on that product, not a bunch of links to buy it. Search engines were there to serve you information, not serve you products. Now they are mostly glorified yellow pages. It's hard to put into words but I can say the web of today hardly resembles the web back then and not in a good way. It was like a playground and everyone with the know how to navigate it was welcome. It's like most things. There's a tipping point where you get too many people involved and degradation occurs. TL. Doctor. This is what happened to the internet. $5 all ages local punk grunge rock band chose it. RIP my inbox. I moved out of Portland a few months ago and I never remember seeing these. Lots of $5 raves and club nights or dive bar raves. Lots of $10 or $20 bar nights. All the all-age venues seemed to close down though. Hawthorne Theatre was cool though. 
still happens. Not in my country, but in the US it still seems to be going on. House shows are a big thing. 2. Dunkaroos. We still have them in Canada. I impulse bought a packet last week. Pretty sure I saw them in Australia recently. 2. Pretty sure I saw them in Australia recently. 2. That may have been a kangaroo. Airport security. Anyone could walk through security and would just empty out their pockets into a tray. My grandfather had polio as a kid so always had a metal brace to help him walk. He used to just point at it to the security guard and he'd walk on through. Then he'd walk us to the gate, hugs goodbye and then go back to the curb where he parked his car with the hazard lights on. Airport security so crazy now. Meeting your family at the gate. Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous again. Guys. Gargoyles. Rocco's Modern Life and Angry Beavers. Ah, yeah. real monsters. Kids were still kids back then and parents let them be kids. I was always out after dark in the summer and I rarely let my mother know where I was. Not because she didn't care. Because she trusted me. You fell and hurt yourself on the playground. Unfortunate accident. Nowadays it's the school's fault and if my precious child get hurt then nobody should have any fun. Duck. Parents. Batman. The animated series. The Tick animated series. Spooloon. Eiffel 65. I'd like to see what other colors they could sing about. Magenta Placenta. Headbangers Ball. TGIF shows. TGIF shows and thin crust cheese pizza from Pizza Hut is every Friday night of my childhood. I throw in a trip to a movie rental place to rent some VHS tapes and maybe a NES game. I'll instantly transport back in 1994. That was the 90s kid equivalent of cracking open a beer at the end of a hard week. Your reward for putting up with all that class and homework and bedtimes and all that shit was some harmless light-hearted fun on TV. A movie in your house that you got to pick. And a hot pizza that was more than you could hope to finish by yourself. You were shifting gears and you were doing it hard. 060 like that. And that's not even factoring in that after you stayed up late. When you woke up there were high concept cartoons on. And after that the sun was out and you could go out and do whatever you wanted. Instant messenger. Asking a girl for her IM name was safer than a phone number. It also gave you a chance to work the number out of her if your type game was strong. An American space program. It's coming. Just give it a few more years. Between NASA and SpaceX things are about to start getting really exciting. The Attitude Era. And that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold said so. Glass Steagall. Proper college radio. I miss the local college FM station so much. Throughout the 90s it featured a little bit of everything on the old modern rock scale it introduced me to Ben Folds 5, The Lemonheads, Liz Fair, The Afghan Wigs, even Joy Division. Although at the time I confess Love Will Tear Us Apart seemed like the lamest song ever. Later at night they played underground hip hop, uncool techno, and some just plain obscure stuff that I'm still struggling to categorize. Oh. The station is still there only now they're broadcasting bland classic rock. That's why I can never go home again. Edit. Much love to everyone who's contributed to the community infidump of awesome stations and the replies some of them I'm familiar with. Most are brand new to me. What I miss most is the mix of electric 90s music. Which may never be recaptured. But damned if I won't try. Ripped jeans. Band t-shirt. And an unbuttoned over shirt as standard dress. There's a good chance you just described 95% of redditors. I mean, I still do that. Is that not standard dress anymore? Planters PB crisps please. Clean. Cheap LSD. Edit. I do just fine poking around. LOL. For the folks who lived through the 90s, you know it was a very different time. In my neck of the woods. $5 per hit. Meaning a 100 microgram-ish hit was a pretty set price. My, um, college friends did a lot of work buying $100 sheets, meaning a sheet measuring 10x10 of 100 hits, and cutting those up. There were other price point deals, the most common being a 10 strip for $20 or $30. If you needed to spend more than $10 for a trip, you were a great customer for a not so great seller. It's hard for people to fathom it now. 
but those hits were some good chemistry, we would fuss over them, like I want the hit with the extra little sliver on it, or I don't want that much, give me those smaller ones, it was well known that this was strong, clean stuff we were handling. It still amazes me that something so small can get you so high. To this very day, I still feel thankful for those experiences. I have two very big problems with the way things are today. The first is research chemicals and fly-by-night synthetics. I've had some of these. These have muddied the waters and added a lot of potential problems to the process of people trying to experience something amazing. I'd much, much, much rather those people get real, good, safe LSD than end up being someone else's guinea pig. If that's your path, please get reagents. Get the most accurate scale you can. Do your research. Be smart. The other problem I have is that we haven't made any progress on lessening the legal punishments for LSD. The federal government thinks of it as a felony. I think of it as a sacrament. That's the way it's always been. Those two opposing viewpoints haven't found any common ground. I really thought we'd be closer to drugs as a human right by now. LSD is an amazing thing. But for most of its existence it's been locked in a dark box. I get sad thinking about it. In other words. I want the kind of stuff I had back then to be accessible to anyone who wants it. I don't see that. I see a lot of different drugs. I see a lot of fear and uncertainty. I understand that progress has been made in certain dark corners. But I still feel like humanity deserves so much better. TL. Doctor. May good LSD find you. And you. And you. And you. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.